What's going on everyone? So, as some of you may remember, on October 1st I started a little Halloween camp contest. Well, actually that's what I thought. I thought it was going to be little. I didn't think it was going to get as big as it got. Like, I didn't think there was going to be as many submissions as there were because there's no way I could narrow that down to top 10. What the heck? Seriously. What was I thinking? But I figured out a way. I'm not going to let all these awesome submissions go to waste. Actually, currently what you're seeing gameplay of is basically like a tribute to some of the submissions. Just to give you all more of a taste of all the creativity that was thrown at me. I was thinking if this video does well, say like it surpasses 700 likes or something, I'll end up making another video showing off 10 more of the Spooky Camp submissions. Like I could definitely do that. There were loads of awesome submissions. Hopefully there are no hard feelings over who I chose for the 10. The main goal out of creating this video is just to spread some more camp creativity out to the community because I know how it is trying to get inspired and trust me you're more than likely going to get some kind of inspiration from at least one of these camps like there are loads of creative ones jam-packed into this one video and before we get into all of these I just wanted to let you all know real quick I didn't care if the finalists added some minor details because they were already chosen as the finalists and if they did decide to add any little details such as for instance like the animatronic cat or the skull candles it would not change their place whatsoever in the top 10. It was just something they could choose to do if they wanted. They couldn't like change up the whole theme and location of the camp, but if they wanted to add like a skull candle over on that table or something, that was completely fine because I know there were some really awesome Halloween Atomic Shop items that did come out close to Halloween, so I just allowed the finalists to do it. I figured it would just chain react some more creativity and possibly some more inspiration for other players. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into all of these now. Hopefully you enjoy these as much as I do and thank you all so much for all the submissions. Definitely appreciate them. So starting off here on the list, I have for you an Xbox user that goes by Superman. As you see, this is how the gamer tag is spelled exactly. And this guy created just a classic, fun Halloween attraction to experience. So this is how it goes. This is the entrance to the attraction, which I really like the entrance. It has the ball boy cutouts that guide you which way you're supposed to go. It has nice lighting and it even sets the tone of what you're about to experience because as you saw when you entered through it, it's not that wide of an entrance. And as you can see, that's what we're now experiencing. We're going through this tight corridor created out of hay piles stacked on one another. And going through this, you'll see like a couple trees here and there, I'm assuming to make it seem more dark going through it. You'll also see pumpkins, a radiation barrel, a frog in a jar, plenty of scarecrows, I don't know, plenty of things that really help create the Halloween atmosphere. And eventually the corridor ends up opening up and it kind of actually seems like a hay maze because there is a possibility of going the wrong way. You know, you can encounter two or three dead ends. So like I mentioned before, nothing too over the top. You know, all players could easily experience this, which I think is nice. You know, it's good to have a balance. Coming across advanced mazes and stuff like that is fun, but it's also fun just to experience something simple too. And I feel like this guy really pulled that off. Um, this isn't something that you would technically experience like a hundred times in a row, but this is something pretty fun to just randomly find around and get to go through it a couple times, especially around Halloween. But yeah, once you end up getting through the hay maze, as you can see, you end up just going through the house, which is still part of the attraction and still feels like the attraction too. Like this guy really incorporated the house with the whole attraction and the lighting going through this is just phenomenal. You can tell he really thought out what he was doing to create more of the spooky atmosphere. I mean, just check that out. That just looks so eerie. But yeah, this is the end of the attraction. And what's also pretty cool about this camp is at the end, you experience like a gift shop. You can get your shopping done at the vending machines before you exit out. And also, if you want, you can grab some candy too on the way out. But yeah, as you can see, this is the exit of the attraction. You're right back at the beginning. And speaking of the beginning, I didn't comment on this. The deck also looks really nice too. Which I'm sure plenty of players just walked right up to the deck, but then realized that it takes a pressure plate on the other side to actually get into the building. So I like how he did that setup. I mean, don't get me wrong, another player could potentially get through the door by something happening, like a player stepping on the pressure plate right as soon as they're exiting out of the attraction or something. That's one way a player could enter through the exit. But for the most part, I feel like it's getting the job done on helping guide the player that this is the wrong way to enter the attraction. Also, another thing that I wanted to comment about this camp, I love the lighting going through this corridor here. I love how the green from the vending machine is blending with the purple in this room. I mean, it really, really helps create the Halloween atmosphere. And not to mention, it gives it more of that spooky vibe too. 
But yeah, that's enough about this camp. Let's move on to the next one. So next up here, we have your sea mummies camp. And I'm just gonna say first off, I have to share the location for where this camp was made at because it's extremely unique. It's a tunnel system that you can build in. It's located right over here in Cranberry Bog. I mean, just check out the lighting when entering this place. It's just insane. Feels like you're entering into a crypt or something down here. I don't know. It's just a really eerie vibe going down in this tunnel system. And just getting the platforms and everything else to fit correctly down here. I don't even want to imagine how many retakes had to have happened. Seriously. I mean, sure, it looks kind of simple. But trust me, when you try to build down here, you'll, you'll understand. It's not easy trying to get things to fit correctly. But yeah, the theme behind this build is actually really neat too. There's actually a monster at the end of the tunnel and that's what's looming up ahead in the darkness with the flickering lights it's some wall mounts formed together and it does look like a freaking monster and there's also a lot of tick wall mounts that are placed a little bit inside the dirt where you don't see the mount for the tick where it seems like it's just a giant tick crawling which is definitely eerie especially the size of these things sheesh and overall i would say this would be decently scary if this was like your first time going through this place and you had no idea about this whatsoever like you didn't expect no monster at the end of the tunnel or whatever but yeah the player managed to actually get a foundation in the back of this wall mount so it would be a dead end and then that's when the monster was added it's a mothman mount combined with a mutant hound mount it looks like it's actually holding or guarding the two bowls on the table which the two bowls is either a trick or a tree as well i don't know if you noticed this but there's also the interactive scarecrow that lights up inside it as well and the player who made the camp stays crouched and invisible and keeps interacting with the scarecrow for other players that come to experience it as you can see it does add a lot lighting is extremely important for builds like this i feel like but yeah that's enough about this camp overall definitely a unique one let's keep this moving though let's get on to the next one so this next camp was made by Bopthor, and it's located over here next to the Treehouse Village. And right off the bat here, I mean, just check out all of the lighting going on for the entrance of his camp. His camp is really unique, too. It definitely is a surprise. At least it was to me. Hopefully it is to you all as well. Also, at the entrance, I wanted to point this out because I really, really like this concept here. I love how he combined the fireplaces to make it a complete circle. And then he added things on top of it as well to make it pop even more, like the pumpkins and the cultist totem. I don't know. I just feel like he did a really good job with that. Also, something else that's really unique in the entrance here is these little setups he's got going on with these picture boards. You know, you set up for a picture here. Uh, but yeah, when you enter them, you actually go behind the glass. And you can just jump out if you have the marsupial mutation or you just fast travel, whatever. But anyways, yeah. So this is the entrance to his camp. His actual camp is inside the mountain. You have to use this cooking station and then you'll go inside the mountain here and inside this place, check it out. Look at the hay pile stacked up, the crops. Like, did you expect seeing this? I don't know, when I first experienced this, I was definitely impressed and entertained to say the least. But yeah, past this little part here, you go upstairs and you enter into a room that's set up like an escape room. You have to figure out the passcode to progress to the next area. And I, first off, I just want to comment on the lighting in here. It is very well done. The purple around the green around oh no it just really sets the atmosphere to be halloween like but anyways yeah so how you figure out this code you're gonna find some numbers around in this room the first one right there as you can see is the four right underneath that glowing ghoul head and then the other ones are inside this little thing that he made that you can't go in but you can just look at from here so it's kind of like an i spy game going on right here you gotta try to find all of the numbers around there's a four back there on the owl mount or whatever that is. There's a four on a pumpkin and a nine on a pumpkin as well. The code is actually nine four four four. Um, but yeah, in this next area, this actually leads up to the exit. So it's just something that you can experience again if you want. But yeah, just pretty much takes you to the top of that mountain that you just went in. And you can just choose to go back down and experience it all over again if you want. What I also really like about this camp is that, you know, typical escape rooms and stuff that are made like this, it's not really super clean on the outside, you know? Like the structures typically look kind of odd or whatever. But when you make it inside of these mountains here, you don't really see the outside of the structure. You just immediately enter into something. 
And in this case, it was a little Halloween attraction that we got to experience. But I mean, when shelters officially come out, then this really won't be as useful because you can just create something like this in the shelters that we're getting. Real unique experience overall. It's the only one that I've seen that submitted something like this to me. Like this was something that blew my mind first time experiencing it. And I'm sure it would other players too, for sure. So this next one is for all of you slasher fans out there. This person that goes by Skelebat recreated Camp Crystal Lake from Friday the 13th. As you can see with this quick tour, you can notice the dock in the background the place where people could sit at. I don't know, there's a lot of very similarities within this camp build. And just walking around with a freaking machete as well, like, <laughs> that's awesome. Definitely some Friday the 13th vibes going on. But yeah, as you can see, there's also the cabins too, placed around as well. And I feel like they did a really good job making the cabins seem lived in. I mean, check out all the details going on in here. This is insane. So little references that this person had, well, first off, the dock, you know, the location, the location alone, they said it took four hours to just find this area. They were just searching around in game for it. Um, also, they made references to the cabins as well. And they also noted that the reason why the hammock was in one of the bedrooms, that was an idea from Friday the 13th part three. Debbie ended up being one of the victims who died in the hammock in that movie. But yeah, I mean, overall, a really well done remake. I mean, just by using what the camp budget limits us to, the atmosphere of this place definitely was giving me Friday the 13th vibes for sure. The dock, the cabins around, I mean, the whole shebang. Loads of details around in the cabins as well. Like, they actually feel lived in. And I'm digging the overlook inside the cabin, even though that really doesn't have anything to do with Friday the 13th, but still, it looks nice inside. You can tell it was well thought out. Oh, and I have to comment on this sign too. Like, the entrance to Camp Crystal Lake is pretty sweet. Definitely creative. I feel like the most important piece about this whole build was the location for sure. Which, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and show you all where this location is in case you may want to do something at this area. As you can see, this is where it's located at, right above the bear down here. So yeah, keep that in mind. Maybe you can make something interesting here. Or at any of the locations that I've shown you. This next camp location is right up here above Freddy Fear's House of Scares. This is actually a really unique camp location. However, keep in mind there will be enemies that spawn here. But check out what the content creator Aquanova Play created and submitted for this camp contest. You know, she achieved the deadline of submitting it at least on or before the 13th. But yeah, I mean, check this out. She literally made a skull out of post. You know, the camp objects that you can select underneath the stair category? Yeah, insane. And check this out, flowing through the mouth. It's like you're going inside its body or something, going in the cave. Really freaking unique. Nothing was similar to this at all that was submitted. This is definitely some original work. Well done, Aquanova Play. If you haven't checked her out on YouTube, definitely go check her out, guys. She makes all kinds of crazy camp builds. Like, this is her thing, so yeah. Definitely go check her out. I have links in the description below. But yeah, and the lighting is just wonderful for this build. The skull was actually going to be different too, but she had mentioned that she did run out of budget. So that's the reason why when we enter into the belly of the beast here, there's not much going on because most of the budget went to the art that we saw outside, you know, the skull. But yeah, when you enter inside, as you can see, you're on this glass here. And you can see fire underneath and there's some eerie decorations here and there and she got the lighting by the uh antler chandeliers but yeah overall once again very well done aquanova play let's go ahead and move on to the next one okay so for this next one guys get ready for your minds to be absolutely blown you would have never have thought that this would have been possible in fallout 76 but this guy made it possible he goes by rad rux and he created this insane camp up here next to deathclaw island right here on the map starting off with the architecture of his camp as you can see he made a lighthouse a freaking lighthouse and he got it lit up green at the top this is actually made from forming cultist beds together and then adding lights to give it the green glow i'm not really sure the backstory on why he chose the green glow but i will say it does suit halloween and it looks nice so you know that's good enough for me let's go ahead and just take a tour through his camp now 
as you see out front he has definitely added a lot of trees to give it more of a hidden vibe going through it the lighting around in this pathway he has created looks magnificent i don't even want to know how long this pathway took to actually get to work my gosh Forming around these giant trees that Bethesda has added in the game, whew, that had been a pain. But I will admit, they are a very nice touch for the camp. They do add a lot. But anyways, in this section here, he has what seems to be some kind of like area where there would be once again some psychic reading being done. A lot of sinister decorations going on around in this little hut. But uh, yeah, I'm not really too sure on the whole backstory to this camp, but it definitely has an eerie vibe and it's just insane how well it is put together. Like, I didn't even think this was possible. But yeah, check out what he has going on inside the chapel here. You can tell something sinister is going down inside here. And I love how he actually incorporated a destroyed wall in his camp. That just looks so awesome. Like, that gives me a bunch of different ideas I could do. I gotta check out what other things look like destroyed. Man, looks nice. But yeah, inside the busted down wall, there is this insane creation he has made. He has created his own instrument in game. He made a freaking pipe organ back here inside the lighthouse. Like that's where the destroyed wall leads to. It leads inside the lighthouse. Like I'm not even kidding. The first time I seen this, I was blown away. I was like, what? No way. So yeah, how he made this pipe organ was he flipped around some stoves, believe it or not, and put it on top of a piano. And then he added a bunch of the posts to make it seem like, you know, those are the pipes. It's just crazy what can be done in Fallout 76, especially with these posts, as we've seen with Aqua's creation. That giant skull, that was awesome as well. But yeah, besides the pipe organ in there, there's also some creepy decorations around on the display cases. Overall, hands down, a phenomenal camp. Radrox is a mad genius when it comes to camp creating. Hopefully he keeps it up. He actually plans on starting to get more into streaming. So yeah, if you're interested in checking out any of his social medias, I'll have links down below in the description to them, as well as others as well. Be sure to be adding information about them. So yeah, be sure to check the description if you're curious about any of the creators. Okay, so this next camp location is probably one of the top locations that you can find a place to camp at. Comes with a human NPC that hangs out here, and the area looks phenomenal, as you can see. It's like a little fishing dock going on here. But yeah, Mystic Storm 9431 created an amazing Halloween camp here. I mean, just starting off on the outside, it has a functioning chimney, as you can see. Smoke is coming out of the roof of the house. The house itself has like a face going on, Thought that was really cool. And there was also a little boat that was made next to the dock. I have to say overall, it definitely resembles a boat to me. Doesn't seem all that complex either to make, which is also pretty nice. Didn't have to take up that much budget. But anyways, moving on inside the Halloween camp, there is a lot going on. Too much to just sit here and talk about every little detail that's going on inside each area. But let's just say the living room looks nice. The kitchen looks really nice. And the cellar of the place is definitely spooky. Which, by the way, when I was saying nice, I was saying, like, yeah, it's definitely nice for a Halloween camp. It's definitely creepy, eerie, spooky, etc. You get the point. I mean, just look at it down here. Definitely some eerie vibes going on, especially with this modified electric chair down in here in the cellar. All you gotta do is flip this switch here, and as you can see, electricity starts going off on the electric chair. Definitely eerie. But yeah, let's go ahead and move back up and check out this corridor here that leads upstairs. As you see, when you're heading toward this corridor, you can see the red lighting, which definitely gives off a pretty spooky vibe. But once you open up this door, there's actually a few references inside this area. One of them is the Riddler. That's why you see all these question marks on the TV here. And to the right of it, we have an It reference. As you can see, they added the We All Float reference. It looks kind of like a restroom mixed with like a sewer or something going on down there. And going upstairs, past all these mirrors and whatnot. You can see a pentagram on the ground and some kind of like Mothman cult worshiping happening. I don't know, some kind of creepiness is happening here. Definitely gives off the Halloween spirit. And not to mention there's a secret room up in here too. And when you open it, it looks like some kind of like psychic reading would happen inside here or something. 
but overall a really interesting and well done camp. Loads of creative details around. Okay, so for this next camp, it was made from a content creator that goes by Nightcrawler. If you're a fan of Stephen King and his classic novel It in any kind of way, more than likely you're going to love this camp. I was blown away with how much thought and work was put into this when I first seen this. It's insane. First off, let me go ahead and show you all the location of this build because I feel like the location is one of the most important pieces to this. Um, you can find an actual sewer system located right over here near Foundation on the road toward the RNG station. You'll end up running into this cop car here, which he also incorporated majorly into this build. I'll get more into that here in a bit. But yeah, you can find a sewer system right underneath this bridge, and yeah, you can build in this sewer system. I haven't seen many, but I have seen a few interesting camps built utilizing this sewer system. But yeah, Nightcrawler did a phenomenal job at this location. Let's go ahead and get into the build now. Like I was mentioning before with the cop car, he actually gave a whole backstory over a cop who decides to investigate strange lights emanating from a vacant home on the Bolt Street, which that street is actually a part of it. And to top it off, the Waterworks Sewage Junction is across from the home as well. So yeah, that's how this guy did the tour, a very creative way to show off his camp. He is now acting as the cop investigating the place and looking around. I thought that was a really creative way to give a tour. But yeah, there are loads of things set up in here based on it. He has things that resemble floating all around subliminally in the camp. As you can see, just starting off here in the beginning in the little dining area. It also seems as if, you know, they were getting ready to get out of this place or something with the pictures at the bottom of the wall. It kind of gives the illusion that, you know, they're just laying up against it. I think that's a neat little trick. He also referenced that this painting is a nod to Stan's fear in the film. And he made sure that the ship in the bottle was also next to it as well. The ships are kind of like leading the way in a sense around in this camp. Pretty creative. But yeah, upstairs there's even more references, such as right here. Pretty creative one. King is a baseball fan, and it was hurt by a bat. And he has this statue pointed toward the clown on the display shelf. And it looks as if it's about to swing at the clown. Pretty neat little reference right there. Once again, thinking about it and how he can incorporate it in the game. Um, also, he noted that this is supposed to be like Stephen King's typewriter right here next to the clown. Once again, another example of this being really thought out. But anyways, moving on upstairs, we have one of the two dead lights in the house, which once again is a reference toward it. And inside this room here, which is a bathroom, we got another reference to floating. Moving on, we can find Stephen King's desk. As you can see, he labeled King underneath the desk. And past this desk, in the corner over here, we can find a P, and that's a reference to Pennywise. And the boat is pointing toward the way that, you know, he's supposed to go. And down here is the well, which is, you know, clear reference to the well house. Nibolt was built on top of the old well house. As you can see, he made sure to have that as a reference pop up here at this part. And this is when he incorporates the sewage system too down here. Check this out, this is insane. You can find Georgie's ship. And he also noted with the three Pennywise held, there are 27 balloons. This references 27 years between killings. Also, it laid eggs just before being killed. And you can find that down here. You can also find floats above the sewage system. And he just noted a sewer isn't complete without a ladder. And I have to admit, that ladder is awesome. That is really creative. I'm sure that could easily be implemented into other builds differently. But the way he implemented it into this one, man, it really adds a lot. Definitely makes it feel more like a sewage system down here. Really creative use with the conduits. Anyways, this next area is how he officially ended the tour. As you can see, he has an arrow pointed down at this door to go open it. And before you actually open it, he put another little reference toward it. Um, as you can see, he noted home references a famous it quote by Eddie. And in here is a room full of clowns. And he noted that the clown room is supposed to be a nod to the recent film. So yeah, I mean, that's about summarizing this camp up. But don't get me wrong, there is even more little references toward it that he added. If you want to see the full tour of it, feel free to check the description for a link to his video over the full tour. I mean, it's insane. Alrighty, so at second place here, I have for you Inked Mama 11's Funhouse. Now I have to say straight up, this was extremely entertaining experiencing. 
Honestly, it would be amazing if more players made these kind of fun houses around in the game. It just adds for some extra entertainment to experience if more players actually made these kind of fun houses. But anyways, before I get more into this camp, let me go ahead and show you all real quick where this is located at. It's actually a pretty nice location if you are trying to make a spooky camp because around this area, in the distance, you can hear like screaming or something going on. And also sometimes like the buildings will start shaking and doors will randomly close. And the reason why that's even happening at the Alpine River cabins is because of a terminal nearby in a tree house pranking this location. On the terminal, as you can see, you get a bunch of different options that you can tinker around with. And one of the options is, well, you can play a sound. And here's what that sound is. That's the scream that you uh, typically hear around this area. So yeah, this is definitely an interesting location, once again, if you are trying to make like some kind of spooky themed camp. But anyways, let's go ahead and get back into the camp. There's a lot of interesting things that I need to go over within this fun house. A lot of unique puzzles that you have to do to progress through it. Such as, for instance, right here in the beginning. As you can see, if you go up to this window, there's going to be letters on the back of this. And these letters are, of course, a code to progress through the next area. You actually have to tinker around with these switches right here. So N is signifying off and Y is signifying on. And once you actually complete the specific code, a flamethrower will destroy the wall. And that's when you can progress to the next area. And this next area right here, you're going to have to find some random numbers to enter a passcode. And the numbers are decently hidden. It is possible to get stuck on this for quite some time. I mean, I'll admit it. I got stuck myself. <laughs> but anyways, once you figure out the code in this room, you'll then progress to this next puzzle room. And the trick to progress to the next area in this room is to step on this secret pressure plate underneath this bathtub. And that'll open up this door here. And in this room here, she actually had a scare actor just hanging out in this room, which I thought was really neat. The scare actor was one of her buddies or whatever, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. And this puzzle here is similar of what we've done in the past. We just have to find the numbers hidden around. Once you end up finding the numbers, that's when you enter the passcode to progress to the next area. This next area is simple, but really creative. As you can see, she made a clock staircase. And when you get to the top, there's an open doorway. And this open doorway leads to a very narrow high corridor where you have to balance across this conduit. This conduit will lead where you can drop off at to get over this high wall. So I thought that was really unique. And then in this area here, you just have to find the numbers once again, and then type in that code to progress to the next area. And this is another area where you're gonna have to find the numbers as well. And this is kind of like an I Spy game here in a sense, kind of like what I showed you previously with Bot Thor's camp. Um, you just have to kind of look from a distance and try to find the numbers, which I think is pretty cool too. And she also had some scare actors inside the area where you have to look around as well, just to up the experience a little bit more. But yeah, this is actually the end of the attraction. Overall, it was extremely entertaining. I had a blast going through it. Honestly, it would be awesome to see more of these around in Fallout 76. They are a ton of fun to experience. Although, of course, they can look a little wonky on the outside, but that's not really what's important. The inside is what matters. The fun factor going through the fun house. And overall, I had a blast going through this one. Alrighty, so lastly up here on the list I have for you Dumplin' Heads Camp. This one blew me away. Hopefully you all enjoy it as much as I did. Um, before I get into touring her camp though, let me go ahead and say what she wanted me to mention. She wanted me to say thank you to the Fallout community for being awesome and big shout out to all my Fallout Twitter fans and the Nuka Gals. I'm pretty sure some of her friends recommended her to submit her camp and good thing they did because it definitely deserves to be shared. There's a lot of little details in here that I'm sure players can use for inspiration. Just starting off at the very beginning here, at the entrance of this attraction, the robot vendor has a pumpkin head. It looks as if it's like the greeter for the attraction. You know, this is where you'll get your tickets at before going in. How cool is that? I mean, just going through this attraction, you'll see it. It actually genuinely feels like a Halloween attraction. Anyways, past the pumpkin head greeter, you actually run into another greeter, which is her ally. But she positioned him really nicely and put a candle in his seat so he would light up as well. It gives him a little bit more of that eerie vibe. Anyways, right off the bat here, she created this really cool hallway with the glass panels. The lighting also in this hallway is phenomenal. Anyways, in the next room, we're being hit with a fog machine, and it looks as if we're walking into a Black Widow's web. How eerie is that? She created a web out of all these conduits. So cool. 
Anyways, progressing further through this attraction, in this next area here, we go through like a cannibalistic kitchen, and then we enter into some kind of experimenting room. I don't know what's going on exactly here, but I definitely get some mad scientist vibes in this area. And keep in mind, all the doors that you see around are locked. The way you progress through this is going through the open doorways. Anyways, in this next section, while going up, she has this Wendigo Colossus rug laying on top of the glass panels at the top of the building. And it looks as if at first glimpse, when walking up the stairs, there's like a monster or something on top of the building. Because all you see is like the hand and whatnot. Definitely set up nicely. You can tell that was well thought out. Don't know why I tried to unlock the door there. Because once again, you know, how you progress through this is just by going through the open doorways. That is until you get to this room here. And this room is a huge reference to The Shining. She tried to add little things around in this area that would remind you of the classic movie, The Shining, such as like the red rum on the mirror, you know, the chalked down door. It looks as if someone's busting through it over there. I don't know, there's just different things around this room that are referring to The Shining. Another example is this fire axe above the bed. I know there wasn't a fire axe technically above the bed, but an axe was used to chop down a door. Anyways, how you progress even further through this attraction is opening up this secret fireplace door, which has a question mark above it. When you open that up, you run into just a little corn maze, and then you enter into this hallway, which reminds me of the Shining hallway, but I'm not exactly sure if that was their goal. But anyways, at the end of this hallway, you can see a Wendigo coming out of a mirror over here, and also some letters that spell out dare to sit. So of course, what any logical person is going to do, they're going to sit and see what happens. And when you do that, you're going to go down into this tunnel system here, and you're just going to see a clown at the end of the hallway here. It's so eerie. You see a subtle strobe light revealing the clown here and there at the end of the hallway. It's creepy. And you're also behind the locked doors that you saw going through the attraction where that mad scientist area was at, which I thought was also really neat how it all ties together and wraps around to the exit. And at the exit here, you can find, once again, another little area that looks as if there would be some psychic reading being done. But this one looks phenomenal. It is extremely well done. I like how the statues are holding the little candles, the dome inside this building especially, the star wallpaper as well around inside. I don't know, overall, definitely a phenomenal little psychic reading area. But anyways, that sums up the attraction. Basically, you just exit right out and you can decide to enter right back in if you want to do it all over again. And of course, there's the gift shop going on too right at the exit as well. You know, that's how it typically goes. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. There were loads of great camps. And I know I got tons of inspiration out of all these camps. Hopefully it's the same case for you as well. That was the goal out of making this. I mean, as you can see the length of it, this took forever to compile together. But I wanted to get this out to the community because I just thought sharing this kind of inspiration could help more players out on getting a little bit more creative with camp building. Anyways, I'm out of here though. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.